Ken, we're back. I know. It's good to Happy see you. Happy Monday. Again. Happy it's Monday. Great to see you. Feels I good know. to be back. I know. We've been on hiatus for a little bit. We've got a lot of fun surprises happening in the full focus world. Yes. But those would be left as a surprise. Well, we have a really good episode today. And if you are constantly getting pinged throughout the day, whether through emails or Slack messages, and you're just getting pulled into meetings constantly, I am definitely raising my hand on this. And maybe you're struggling to get really deep and creative work done. Well, this episode is for you because today we're talking about time blocking. All right, let's do this. Welcome to another episode of Focus on This, the most productive podcast on the internet, so you can banish distractions, get the right stuff done, and finally start loving Mondays. I'm Ken Freire, here with Marissa Hayek. Hey, 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 what's up, Marissa? Remember that? Everyone ever watched, like, Where in the World is Carmen San Diego? Of yes. course. Like, like, Early 90s, The question yeah. is, where in the world is Marissa right now? I know. Where are you, Marissa? Why aren't you in the studio? Well, I wish I was far across the world at some exotic location, but I am actually um, out at my parents' lake house this weekend. Uh, I decided to come a day early and um, be here for the long weekend and enjoy being with family. And um, so I'm at their lake. So if you're watching on YouTube, you might get lucky enough to see a hummingbird sighting because I have a hummingbird feeder right behind me. So we'll see. I don't know. You're, if we get lucky today, we might have you're some. You have permission for me to stop everything if a hummingbird appears. Well, hummingbirds are one of my favorite birds ever. So I will can, probably. Can you zoom into like, the hummingbird? Oh. That's the question. Ooh. I, we I, can't impose. Yeah. All right, definitely. Done. All right. Okay, cool. Well, fingers crossed we get one. We're here to talk about time blocking. And Ken, the reason that we're going to be talking about this today is because we actually had somebody in our Full Focus Planner community ask us, what is your philosophy on time blocking? And I was like, hey, that sounds like a great episode for us to talk about time blocking. And so um, you may know about time blocking. You may not know about time blocking. Uh, We also uh, have a term that we talk about, which is mega batching. They're very similar but they're a little bit different. Uh, One kind of just precedes the other, which is mega batching is when you take similar tasks or activities throughout your week and you mega batch them. You put them in a batch together rather than spreading them out throughout the week. And time blocking is essentially when you take those activities and you stick them on your calendar. So we're going to talk about this today and hopefully you're going to walk away with some really practical tips that are going to enable you to stay focused and get the right stuff done, which is what we're all about here at Focus on This. So Marissa, let's talk about why we need this. Why do people need this? What's what's the first major reason for it? Yeah, well, I feel like if you're somebody who is constantly pulled in multiple directions and you're always getting interrupted, you need to be time blocking. I feel like this, uh, this is like the worst thing ever for your productivity when you're just like feeling like, Oh my gosh, I got to go do this. And now I got to do this. And you know, you're just always all over the place. Uh, time blocking is super helpful as a tool to combat that. Yeah. Especially if you're like in high levels of leadership, right? Your time is being asked of all the time, right? Whether it's a manage, uh, one of your employees, a different manager, a colleague, right? Yeah. Uh, a great way that I have found for people to know that they are in re- in this mode that they don't have creative work is if they're in reactive mode, where they yes. constantly feel like they're just pulling uh, putting out fires and not actually getting time to do the work that they need to get done. Uh, I I feel this way sometimes. You know, when I'm like, oh, I got to do this, 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 like, and then all of a sudden it's like five o'clock and I'm like, what just happened to the day? I know I've just been in reactive mode all day, yeah. right? Yeah. I actually had a day like this earlier this week and um, I was really struggling. It felt like I was being pulled all over the place. I was totally in reactive mode. Um, and honestly, prepping for this episode was a great reset for me to go, okay, I got to like hit the pause button and figure out how do I actually want to spend my time and how am I going to be the most productive and effective 
at my job that I can be. Uh, now, a lot of what we're talking about today is going to be kind of professionally focused, but this also really applies to your personal life. So we'll kind of talk about that. But um, even if you're not in a higher level you know, leadership position, it doesn't matter if you're self-employed, whatever it looks like, uh, you probably feel like you're in reactive mode a lot of time. The other thing is that you might feel like you're struggling to get that headspace that we talked about for that deeper work, that creative thinking, brainstorming, future planning, that you know, it's like you can't do that in between meetings. You need a period of time to really get into that headspace. And time blocking is a fantastic way uh, to accomplish that. So do we want to dive into how do we do this? How do we time block? What does it look like? Yeah, let's do it. But before we jump in, I just have a very interesting story based off of what you were just talking about, how this happens to me all the time. And hopefully some of you can relate uh, and why we need lots of time, like lots of deep work time is that if I ever have like an hour of, uh, you know, of time allotted for myself, if all of a sudden I do a 30 minute job then I have an extra 30 minutes. I'm like, oh, I don't know what to do with those 30 minutes. So then I start like doing these menial tasks. And sometimes now I only got 15 minutes. I'm like, oh, what am I supposed to do with these 15 minutes, right? Like all of a sudden you just start to lose a lot of uh, efficiency and effectiveness with your time. And I find this with me, with myself quite often, especially this past month, because there's like just a lot of uh People I'm introducing into the certification program, a lot of people who have just come into it who want to talk. So there's these like these dead spaces that I'm like, what do I do with this? And how do I optimize my time better so I don't feel like I'm wasting it on these 15, 20 minutes here and there? Uh, so I think that's where the, this conversation of learning how to time block better is going to be super effective for all of us to just remember and reset on uh, as we're having this conversation. Yeah, 1000%. Yeah, I completely agree with that. And it is such a productivity killer and a confidence killer, honestly, if you just feel like you can't get into the headspace that you need to be in for whatever it is you're working on, whether yeah. it's, you know, getting to inbox zero in your email or, you know, strategizing something that you're planning three months from now and you need to really have a good amount of time to think through it. So, all right, let's dive into how we accomplish time blocking. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is to triage your calendar and your task. This sounds really obvious and kind of like, well, duh, but I think this is often overlooked. People immediately jump to what they want to happen rather than what is actually um, happening on their calendar where they're spending your time. And so one of the biggest things that I would recommend that is an incredible tool to help you with this is something called the task filter. Uh, this is something that we talk about in um, our Free to Focus course and in my dad, Michael Hyatt's book, Free to Focus. It's a fantastic book if you haven't read it. Uh, but he talks about this idea of filtering your task and then determining what you need to automate, eliminate, and delegate. And um, I think that it's easy for us to think everything that's on our task list is like, we have to be the one to do it. And we might go through seasons where, you know, we are not thinking about, we're not analyzing and, you know, critically thinking through what we're doing every single day. And I think anytime you go through a life change, whether it's a promotion if you have um, maybe job role responsibility changes that have happened, maybe the goals of your company or the business that you work for has shifted, anything like that is a great time to go back and decide, do I need to be the one doing this or could I automate it? I mean, AI has so much available now for us to automate things. Um, do I just need to like get it off my list? Like we don't need to do this actually anymore. It's not productive. It's not profitable. It's not bringing in revenue or it's just not the best use of my time. Um, or can I delegate it to somebody else on the team or an outside source um, or a creative solution of delegation? Like even if you're thinking about this in your personal life, can you delegate your grocery shopping to something like Instacart? That would be a great example of a personal task that you could delegate out uh, for pretty cheaply. I mean, it's not, you know, uh, the cheapest option, but it's not the most, um, it wouldn't be as expensive as hiring like a personal assistant. Um, yeah. and then essentially when you do that, going through and determining what is similar, which leads us into the next point, which is, which is just making a full list of things you do every day, right? I think sometimes what ends up happening is you don't know what to eliminate. You don't know what to automate. You don't know what to delegate because you're just in this mindset of overwhelm. 
right? You just feel like you have to do a lot. So what I think is really important for people to do is just like sometimes just diagnose. Yeah. Sit down, look at everything that you're doing in this current moment. And yeah. what I've told people as I've coached them is like, just take a week every day. Just write down all the reoccurring tasks that come up, right? So then when you do that, then you can start to say, oh, here are the things that I could eliminate. Here are the things that I could automate. Here are the things that I could delegate. And getting creative on how you can do those things. I have found many times people are like, oh, I can't delegate this thing. I'm like, well, can you delegate part of it, right? Mm -hmm. Or can you, can you, like you said, can you do Instacart? Can you right. uh, go on Fiverr and get someone and contract them out? Those are typical things that you can do to make sure that you help people or to help yourself triage your calendar and your task. Yes. And then once you've figured out what those things are that you do have to do, like whatever you're left with, those are the things that you want to batch. And so you want to go ahead and start batching your task by stage and theme. And so obviously similar tasks, like if you're checking your email throughout the day, you have certain meetings that are similar, go ahead and kind of group those. And then you want to think of this in two categories. So by stage and by themes. So your stages would be front stage, backstage, and then off stage. Okay. Now your front stage activities are going to be anything that you're presenting. So right now, Kim, like we're, this is a front stage activity yep, for us is 100%. recording the podcast. If I'm recording a webinar, that's a front stage activity. Whenever you're recording videos for our certification program, that's a front stage activity. Uh, your sales calls, if you're doing any kind of sales calls or meetings uh, with outside, you know, clients, or uh, if you're a coach, for instance, and you're, you have clients that you coach, those would all be front stage activities. Now, backstage is more of the admin aspect. That's more of the team meetings that you might be having, your one-on-one -on -one meetings with your team, creative work deep work. And then offstage is all of that rest, rejuvenation, connection, et cetera. You know, that's like kind of your, how you can think about your stages. Um, and I think that this is a really helpful thing because it helps indicate what type of energy we have to show up with, which we're going to talk about a little bit more later on. Um, but energy is going to be really important for you to think about as you're time blocking. It's, I think maybe, the most overlooked part of time blocking. So we'll talk about that in a bit. Anything else you want to yeah. say about uh, stages? No, I, I think just people getting that language is really important because sometimes, again, they think everything's important. Where it's like, no, you got the front stage, you got the backstage, you're off, you got the off stage. I guarantee you most people only focus on the front stage and backstage, don't really focus on the off stage, but that's why we're yeah. going to talk about that here in a minute. But the next section of the activities of as you batching it, obviously you got stages, then you got themes. So the way you can dissect the themes is either by day or by time, right? Yeah. So let's talk about by day, right? You want to know every day what does it look like? Can you have it systematized as best as possible? So here's an example of like what we've done here at Full Focus, right? And for like I've done it, Marissa's done it, uh, several people tweak it, but a couple ways for you to think about it. So this is an example, right? Uh, so Monday, for example, we might you might have that day as just future planning. It's working on your business or on your in your on your department versus in the business or in your department, right? Uh, Tuesdays, all team meetings. So if you ever to come to Full Focus and you're trying to have a meeting with us, you probably won't because we're just stacked with all of our team meetings, right? Uh, Wednesday, this is deep work. So here at Full Focus, we have like a no meeting Wednesday, and we try to keep that like holy as possible. Yes, right. Sometimes and honestly. This is such a pro tip. Like if you are not yeah. identifying one day out of your entire week that is just meeting free, we highly encourage you to do this. I can't imagine if we didn't as a company, I'm like, I would never get anything done. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, for sure. It's it. What's crazy is, you know, we have a hybrid uh, work environment here, but even then it's just Slack could be going off all day long. And it's like Wednesday is just like, I'm not even looking at Slack till the end of the day because I'm just so focused on any deep work that I need to get done. Uh, and it's amazing because everybody on the team is doing the same thing. So, uh, okay. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we have those. Another one, Thursday, you could do like one-on-one -on -one meetings if you are a director or something like that, you have employees uh, or just project work, right? So like, you know, like there's these big tasks, big tasks that you got. Maybe this is when you start focusing on your weekly big three uh, based off the planner. Uh, Friday, you have external meetings and any other administrative work. So whenever I have external meetings with either contractors or different uh, consultants that I'm, I'm talking to, this is typically when it happens. 
And then I just have any admin work, right? We all have admin work that we try to hold off. Uh, I have to do a lot of spreadsheets, uh, data analysis. Uh, typically that does happen on Friday. I also do some on Wednesday because it can pile up pretty quickly. Uh, and then Saturday is like your personal day, right? Like, what do you want? Like there's for me, my personal day is doing the honey do list, right? Yeah. Uh, and then Sunday it's rest and prep. So you'll notice that each day has a theme and those themes are there just to help you to categorize all the work that you're going to get done. Now, sometimes there's going to be some ebb and flow, right? Sometimes you need to take an external meeting on a Monday or on a Tuesday, but the more you can have a theme for each day, the better off you're going to be, right? And then from there, you can now start doing it by time, right? So first you, you, you split it up by day, then you split it up by time. The way you could do this is either creative work in the morning and meetings in the afternoon. Most of us love doing our deep work in the morning. So I would suggest you do that and then leave your afternoon for your meeting days. So you're not using all of your mental energy. Uh, I think, I think that this actually is really dependent on the person because I think for some people, they feel kind of groggy in the morning. And so they might want to batch all their admin right out of the gate, get it over with, or they just prefer that so that it's like off their plate. They feel like they can go into their creative work with their slate clean, you know? Um, and so I think thinking of it by time, if you're looking at your, for instance, your ideal week, um, which we have a great tool that, um, we'll share in a bit where you can get this for free. You can, um, put on there where, you know, you're looking at your day, the times, how you want that blocked out by the time. So you could have like, um, one of the things I think people often overlook is their rituals, for instance. So your morning ritual, that would be a great aspect of time blocking. You say from, you know, 7am to 9am or 6am to 8am or whatever your, you know, however long it takes for your morning ritual, you block that out. If you look at my calendar every single morning from 9am to 930 is my workday startup ritual. That's every single day I have it blocked off. Um, same thing with my workday startup, same thing with my evening ritual. And, uh, this is a great way to think about themes is throughout the day. Like what kind of work do you want to be doing? What kind of activities do you want to be doing? Um, by the time of day. One other pro tip on time blocking that I do is I typically either do it by three hour increments or four hour increments. Nice. I've gotten to a place where I do three hour increments. So like my day will start at six. So it's from six to nine, it's personal and family. Nine to 12, it's like deep work, right? 12 to three, it's at all my admin or, or office meetings, right? Three to six. Again, like I'm just always on a three hour time block on most days. And that's been super helpful. I've been doing that for years. Uh, that's just great. when I like think through my ideal week. Uh, mm -hmm. I do it all in three hour increments in even my job. So then I know, oh, I have this major project. I have a three hour block of time of deep work. I could do it on Wednesday, Friday, or, or Monday, you know? Yeah. Uh, so that's another thing to that's think really about good. when it comes to buy time. Yeah. Well, I would say with your themes, I would, um, you can do both by day, like create a theme for each day. You can also create a theme for, you know, by time, like we're talking about, um, you know, you could do both. Uh, generally speaking, I would say you probably don't necessarily need to do both, um, but you can obviously if you want. So the other thing that I'll just add here is you're thinking about themes and thinking about where everything kind of fits in is making sure that you're adding in time for your goals. So this is another thing that can be often overlooked uh, as you're kind of creating this ideal week and what it looks like for you, but make sure you're time blocking. So if, for instance, you have a, um, you know, goal for um, trying to think like exercising or something, make sure that you're accounting for that within your week. You don't want um, to have an, an aspect where, um, you know, you get to the end of the week and you're like, shoot, I didn't work on anything because I didn't have it in my calendar. Um, so make sure that you're, you're adding that into your time blocks. You could even have a whole time block in the morning, afternoon, wherever you want it. That is like goal work, you know? Yeah. Um, and that could be a specific day where you focus on that. That could be a specific time, uh, whatever makes sense for your life and your goals. Yeah. You know, for, uh, for those of you who know this, we have been doing a 70 day, uh, health challenge, right? Health and wellness challenge. Uh, so to, to Marissa's point on time blocking on a specific time, uh, I would either go to the gym at six o'clock in the morning, or, you know, if I wanted to get some more steps in, I'll go for a walk with my kids, go to the park in the evening, typically around five thirty-six. 
Yesterday was a great example of us not accomplishing this because my kids, for some whatever reason, uh, we ended up not going to the park. Uh, so now it's like 930 at night. I'm ready to do my like my evening shutdown. And I remembered I haven't done my 30 minutes of uh, movement for this health yeah. challenge. And I was like, do I go to bed or do I do something? Yeah. And, what did you do? <laughs> uh, I ended up like doing just a lot of stretching in my my room. Uh, but like my wife was asleep, so the lights were off. I'm like stretching yeah. in the dark. Yeah. Uh, but I say that, you know, a little bit joking because I'm like, oh, this is what happens when you don't time block appropriately or like you're not looking at it of like, oh, where do I add this? Which leads to the next point is building in white space, right? Life happens Things occur that we forget about or, or you know, like yesterday, I think we went to my, my kid's gym and then we didn't get home till late. So that's why we didn't go to the park. So I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't know when I'm going to do my workout. So you got to build in white space for the, you know, God only knows what happens throughout the day totally. to be able to yes. make this happen. Well, and that always happens. I mean, whether it's in your personal life or at work, stuff happens. And so yeah. building in time for it is important. Um, all right. So one of our last things is uh, for you to consider as you're time blocking is your energy. So we've touched on this a few different times, but uh, like I said, I think this is the most um, overlooked thing when people are time blocking. They're just putting it on, you know, on their calendar and they're not thinking about how do I feel in the mornings or in the afternoons? You know, when do I feel an energy slump? And so this is really important for a lot of people. They have the most energy in the mornings, like you said, Ken. Um, and so if that's the case for you, like I know for my dad, that is really true for him. And so he wants to make sure the mornings are his creative work. Um, and then he does, he actually has, you know, time in for a nap every single day. And then in the afternoon, that's when he's doing admin work that doesn't take a lot of brain power but that might be like flip-flopped for you. That might be that you have the most um, energy in the afternoon. This is kind of like for me. And so um, often I like to do some admin stuff in the morning, um, get that over with. And then I like to do, you know, a lot of deeper thinking work um, in the afternoons. This is when I prefer to exercise this in the afternoon. Here at Full Focus, we typically work um, until about 3 p.m. Somewhere between 3 and 5 is is what uh, is pretty typical for us. And I usually like to work out after work. Uh, it feels like a great clean break for me. I can switch my headspace, um, but that's for me. And I know for other people, like they can't even imagine having any, any energy in the afternoon. And so they need to do it right out of the gate when they wake up like you. Like, I just don't understand. Yeah. I can't imagine getting up and working out by 730 or 630 or seven like that. I just I would be like asleep at the wheel. And I, I can't oh, imagine. No, no, trust so. me. I hate life every like I have to wake up at 530 to get to the gym at six. I hate life every single moment. I'm regretting it all the time. By the time I get there and we're done, I'm like, oh, this was worth it. But literally, my wife is like, are you going? I'm like, I don't know. Like, do I have to? Uh, but I mean, like, that's you know, impressive, and, but and we yeah. do it. So I, I would say, you know, I have an interesting thing about energy management that I have found and I have to be careful with mm -hmm. is that I typically either can do deep work in the morning or in the evening time, like after I put yeah. my kids to bed. So like after I get a second wind around eight o'clock and I have to be very mindful how I use that second wind, because if it's like, if all of us were just chatting and relationally, I might be, I might get tired. But if we start doing any deep conversations, I might get locked in and I could stay up to like one o'clock in the morning. Or yeah. if I start doing deep creative work, like writing something, I could stay up to one o'clock in the morning. And it actually, while I may seem productive, right now I'm going past my bedtime because I'm going to have to wake up at six in the morning and now I'm like all groggy the next day. So yeah. I think when it comes to energy management, you do have to be mindful of those things of like, if you are a night owl like myself, I'm, I'm naturally a night owl. You have to have the room in the next day to be able to either sleep in or to regulate your body in such a way that you have energy, appropriate energy throughout the day. Well, I think one of the most helpful tools, if you're kind of like, I don't really know when I have the most energy or that kind of thing is chronotypes. If you have never heard of chronotypes, there are several 
they're all animals, so it's kind of fun. Uh, but basically, you figure out which type of chronotype you are based on um, there's like different tests that you can take and all kinds of things. Um, you can look this up. But either, I think, let's see if we can remember them. There's a bear, a wolf, a dolphin, and... I've never done this a, test. Oh, I was or thinking about owl, the tech. Or I don't think it's an owl, but it's like whatever the night owl. So we talk about you're either like an huh. early bird or you're a night owl. Well, there's actually a lot of science on this. Um, and these are called chronotypes. You can look up just there's tons of free ones. Lions, bears, wolves, and dolphins. And uh, there's a lot. Of, there's some research on here. I, I I did not do a deep dive in the scholarship yeah. in the last 15 seconds, but I do know people talk about this. So <laughs> It's really done- fun. Yeah, it's a fun test. I've done the test. temperament one. Yeah, well, it's a fun test to take to um, to determine. Um, it, it's it's not just like you know, are you a night owl or not, or a morning person or not. There's specific times of the day that you can optimize for your chronotype. So, for instance, when you drink coffee, is you should be basing that on what chronotype you are. Um, when you stop drinking coffee, also should be based on that. When you're doing certain activities like exercise or deeper thinking, um, all of that you can figure out with your chronotypes. Most of these will have schedules for each of them that are like helpful to consider as you're looking. Uh, two books that I want to point out if you're interested in this topic that are super helpful to learn about chronotypes and kind of dive into this topic are the book by Daniel Pink called When, W-H-E-N, and then by Michael Bruce. uh, He also wrote one called The Power of When. And so both of those are fantastic. They really dive into not only um, how to identify which chronotype you are, but also the science and research behind this. And it's really fascinating. We should uh, we should put in a, in the show notes one of the assessments we think people would take. What free assessment yeah, would be good? Totally, we can. I do because I want to take it. I just took one right now. I'm a dolphin. Oh, that is so fast. Okay, fantastic. So that's how fast it was. We'll definitely check out Chronotypes. Both of those books are great. We'll put it in the show notes. Um, uh, and you know, one of these tests that you can take. Also, um, maybe we need to share in the community, Ken, what we are. We should take these. And sure yeah. what we are. I, I think I know what I am, uh, but I'd like to retake it. So, um, okay. Can someone so, Photoshop my head into whatever I am? <laughs> oh, God. I will I will, I will. will poorly do it. You're you saying having, Photoshop. I'm saying Canva or whatever. <laughs> uh, I was having, thinking like Microsoft Paint. <laughs> sure. Yeah, yes. I'm having <laughs> visions of Nick's face on a dolphin. And, <laughs> and that's and exactly it's what I was thinking. It's everyone's dream. Uh, <laughs> real quick. <laughs> <laughs> and something that I've been, I've been thinking about recently as it relates to your schedule. I, I don't think about your schedule all day, but what you I, just I said. Like, of, uh, <laughs> is so I work at home. I'm also by I'm a night owl by I don't know technically, but I it, the quiet of the night is very helpful for me. Yeah, I haven't done it yet because of the work I do, which is audio production. But I are, are people wearing noise canceling headphones at home? I do. Okay, that's I, I'm sitting here and I was like. I it's so hard to be here, yeah, and know that there's like a ton of stuff happening. You homeschool your kids, right? Yeah, yeah, and it's like very. And part of the advantage of night is that it is quiet, and you're like, I know there's nothing that needs any time. And then I went, well, I should be wearing noise canceling headphones. Yeah, so I just want to make sure that doesn't sound insane. Marissa made a look when I said it. She's like, Why would you do that? No, I mean, uh, so just to clarify, we will be homeschooling our kids we've our oldest one was in private school and now we're bringing her and doing homeschooling this upcoming year but all the other kids we've been doing stuff with but yes whenever i'm doing deep work i typically have my noise counseling headphones on and i have music in the background because sometimes i just got to drown out the noise yeah (laughs) and like it's just helpful it's one of the honestly i would say it's one of the cons of working from home if you have little kids you know people always say like oh it's the best thing ever i'm like it is like it is great because I could step away and help, but yes. when you're trying to do deep work, it's really difficult, right? Because you're like, I hear the crying child. Do I yeah. step out and help, or do I keep working? Because my boss is going to ask me for this report in another thirty minutes. So yes. which one do I do? Okay, so before we wrap up, um, we want to share a free tool with you guys that you can take and implement all that we've talked about today and start time blocking 
and really creating your ideal week. And so you can just go to fullfocus.co slash ideal week to get a free printable. If you're a Full Focus Planner user, you are familiar with this tool, you have it in the beginning of your Full Focus Planner, uh, but I kind of like to sketch it out uh, before I officially put it in my planner. And so even if uh, you have the planner, you might wanna get this printable copy uh, that you can try. And then pro tip, we've talked about this in a previous episode, once you have your ideal uh, week, go ahead and map that out on your calendar, on your electronic calendar, whether that's Google or whatever calendar you use, put it in there so that you can see what it looks like and you can create a new calendar set, add it in, and then you can reference it whenever you need, whenever somebody asks for a meeting or you know for an appointment, you can see where it makes sense um, within your ideal week. All right, Ken, anything else you wanna add? I would say if you're feeling overwhelmed, because this is a lot of stuff, to be like, oh my gosh, do I start with themes? Do I start with an ideal week? Do I start with time blocking, chronotype? What should I do? Man, honestly, I would say take a deep breath and just diagnose. First thing first, diagnose what can you automate, automate, what can you eliminate, what can you delegate? That's gonna be the biggest help for you right now. And then the second thing would be once you do that, is to just, manage your energy like when do you have the most energy to do the deepest work possible you will find that if you do those things you'll have more energy it's like the cycle of winning right the more you win you're going to keep winning and winning you'll find the time to be able to do all the other tips that we've talked about today awesome well thanks guys for joining us on focus on this this is the most productive podcast on the internet so please share it with your friends and be sure to join the full focus planner community on facebook so you can benefit from the creativity and encouragement of people chasing big goals just like you and we're going to be here next week with another great episode we're actually going to be talking about how to unplug for your summer vacations so you don't want to miss that one and until then Stay, Stay focused. focused.